it is a whole image it's it's a it's a painting it's a you know what you have a frame and you're working within that frame and it's not just the flowers that you're photographing you're photographing everything there In this week's episode, I interview Anna Potter from Swallows and Damsons. Anna and I actually haven't met before. Everybody else I've interviewed, I have met and known before. But I already felt like I knew Anna from following her online. And also she's one of the florists in my Instagram for Florists online course. There's an interview case study with her there. So I was so delighted to spend time with her and hear about her small business journey and how she started her floristry career and then went on to open her own shop and then wrote her own book. So we talk about her journey and then we also talk about what happened when in March 2020 the pandemic happened and the impact that had on Anna and her business. I'm sure you'll really enjoy hearing my interview with Anna and as much as I did interviewing her it was so lovely to connect with her and hear her thoughts on her business and her artistry in floristry as well so I hope you enjoy having a listen. A very warm welcome Anna to the My Small Business and Me podcast. Hi Rona thank you for having me thanks for having me here today. It's my absolute pleasure and I, I feel from seeing all the pictures of you on Instagram and also Design Sponge and, and your book mm. that I feel like we sort of know each other already, but we've never met before. I feel like that is such a, because I, 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 I feel the same and it is, um, that is it's such a familiar feeling with so many people. I think when you share, because you're sharing your life on, on a little, well, parts of your life on a little screen, aren't you? And people know where you've been and what you're doing <laughs> yeah. and when you've been swimming yes <laughs> yes well, I don't share all the swims because you know <laughs> it might get a little bit tedious but yeah it's um that's been a lovely thing right well let's start off with your small business journey Anna could you start from the very beginning please so I did fine art at university which um was a really it was at Sheffield Hallam and it was a really free open course which um at the time I think I probably grumbled quite a lot about because um going from school to university you kind of you used to being told what to do a little bit and you sort of you're going out there and it's like right um I'm going th this is the course I'm doing I'm going to learn someone's going to tell me what I'm going to learn and actually no one told me what I was going to learn and no one told me what I was going to specialize in or everything was self-led and everything was very free and open. So you could literally, all the resources were there and you could go and choose yourself and go in the direction that you wanted to go in. So I did a lot of photography at university. Um, I did some painting and but it was mainly the photography that stuck. Um, and it was a lot of um, darkroom photography. So developing the photos. And I think actually looking back now, I can see what I love. The thing that I loved so much was actually less the process of actually taking the photos and more the development side and sort of looking at light and dark and controlling tone and things like that so that was that was very much my what I was interested in and the route I went down at university um and then after um after finishing there and um I didn't know what to do at all so uh, <laughs> it was a complete <laughs> there was a complete black hole of um what do I do now um in which I just tried lots of different things tried teaching worked in well worked in cafes and things which I loved doing um I'd always wanted a shop really when, yeah, when I, was I, that first a dream then I think I I don't think it ever really I think it wasn't like one day it dawned on me I think my dad had a shop when we were growing up so he ah. um he 
um, had like a camping and outdoors and caravan kind shop, um, which I just used to love um, running around and hiding in it. And, you know, like in and out of tents and, and stealing chocolate bars and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> but I, I, loved the, I loved that space. I loved having a phys- that there was a physical space that people could come into. So for me, I'd always... There was always a dream, an innate sort of dream of having, whether it be a cafe or, um, well, I, I very much was into like interiors and antiques after the fine art degree. So whether it was going to be like an antique shop or an interiors place, but florists was never on the cards because I wasn't a florist and I didn't know that was something really that you could do or that, that would be a job that wasn't just sort of considered a bit a bit dated or, or a bit sort of for, for older women if you like. Oh how many years ago do you think this was Anna that you were thinking? That would have been about 16, 16 years ago. Okay. Um, there wasn't much well not that I was aware of because obviously with the you know we didn't have social media and things so there wasn't a great deal out there that I was aware of that was in in the floristry world that was doing anything like what what I would have considered creative or interesting um I, I mean it might have been out there but I just I didn't know about it because everything the whole world was a little bit smaller then just a touch <laughs> yes <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was really by chance my friend um got me a job and she'd she'd studied fine art with me and got me a job in the florist that she had started working in she's like, I think you'll really like it and I was like all right I was done with the things that I was currently doing I was like right how you know let's <laughs> let's give this a go and it was a bit of a joke actually it was a bit of a um felt like you know my mum laughed at me all my friends were sort of like, oh, you're going to be a florist. So, and, and it did feel a bit like, this is not, this is not a job for Anna. This is, yeah, it just, it, I don't know why. I think because it didn't have that sort of wild, the, jo- the florists at the time and the small florists, they all felt quite um, prescribed. Everyone was kind of doing the same thing, quite controlled in a sense that like, you make something here you go it's like quite neat and it is a product and whereas at art you know at art school and everything I had been quite quite wild and quite <laughs> a little bit difficult to tame maybe <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so it didn't feel like it was going to be something that was necessarily stuck but it did and it did very quickly and as soon as I started using my hands to create every day with natural products, realised how no two things were ever the same. I think that was the main sort of thing. Yes, you were being told to make something in a certain way, but it wouldn't always work out because flowers are flowers. <laughs> you know, they're not they're not all the same, and they're not you know. So it was, um, yeah, it was it was it was a definite instant fit. So you didn't have any formal floristry training then it was all on the job was it no it was all on the job and it was um I was taught by a couple of really experienced florists but experienced in different ways so one of which wasn't um one of which wasn't trained at all so she'd learned she'd learned on the job as well and the other was a more traditional uh, florist who had who had spent years training and had been a florist for years as well so I got I got quite a well-rounded um education there and it was and it was wonderful actually it was a wonderful first place to to learn um, and a, a lot of trust was put in me straight away um and that was re- that was really nice because I, it felt like there was a belief straight away that I, oh you yeah you can just get on with this and you get it wasn't like someone standing over me all the time or being too 
yes, I'd be directed, but um, it, it was quite free and I, I feel very fortunate actually for that. So if the floral style back then you say was quite structured, mm. did, did you have to try and create in that style or did they give you free reign to do the Anna style? I, I created in that style. I created in the more structured style, which was um, even for the florist where I was working, even for that time was considered a little bit outside of the box. They did, it was like, it was a garden center as well. So it was, and they did a lot of garden design. So it was quite nature led as it was. Um, and, um, and I loved that, but I always felt, I always felt like there was more, there was more to, to do. And I think as an inexperienced florist, I didn't feel actually like I could, it wasn't maybe my place to, in that business, to then start going, actually, we should do it like this and we should do, <laughs> even though that's what I was feeling. But I think um, it would be a bit like, well, who, who, who are you to, you know, to come in and say, actually, we should do it like this. You've been doing it for six months or a year. And it, it just, um, yeah, I, I did. I did pretty much stick to what I was told to do there. Um, and then I. Went. How did things progress then? How, yeah, what so, was the next stage? Well, the next stage was I moved to another florist where it was definitely more so the other way. So more structured, more quite um, polished um, kind of vibes, and then that started to really. I feel it bubbling up in me <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> no <laughs> don't do that to flowers um <laughs> so I didn't last very long there but that was the push that I needed to then um do my do my own thing I think that sometimes you can have these well seemingly negative experiences where it's not um yeah things aren't going the way that you envisage or but it actually pushes you it pushes you out to do something that is more that you that you need to do yourself that is more your creative vision um, and that's what that did definitely so it was all meant there, to be yeah after there I left and um started flowers and damsons not with without a shop at first but not for very long just working from home with um friends and uh small weddings for people and um, that friends of friends and things like that but um that was literally for about maybe four months i think before i actually got the the shop space so from you starting helping in the first shop to you setting up swallows and damsons how many years was that it was about three, three okay. years. Yeah. And um, and where did the name Swallows and Damsons come from? Because it doesn't have floral connotations. No, it's got a botanical really. connotation, mm. but it really stands out. It was, um, I think Swallows and Damsons was, bef I came up with the name before I was a florist. So when I wanted a shop, <laughs> any shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it doesn't have floral connotations because it was um I remember sitting around the dinner table actually with my family and I was like I just want I just want to shop just want to shop I'm going to call it I don't know swallows and damsons and they were like oh that's nice <laughs> I was like, okay <laughs> so really I know maybe you want a more thought through no. answer than that but <laughs> no um swallows and da swallows and amazons was my favorite book as a child and I think the name, it, the name is, a, feels rooted in nature. It's, um, I feel like it's imaginative. It has an element of curiosity and play um, because of the book itself and imagination. And I think those things are all really important to me. So whatever the business was gonna be, that would have worked almost. And I think at first as well, I was a bit worried that I wouldn't stick with floristry. I think I was a bit sort of, well, what happens? What happens if I decided? Because I am known for changing my mind uh, quite regularly. Um, so I did, 
think, well, you know, if if the flower shop doesn't work out, I'll, maybe I'll turn it into something else. <laughs> wow. But it turns if out it's it stuck. <laughs> it's incredible to hear that. To Because how many years have you been, been in business now? Uh, 13. No, 12. <sighs> 12. Yeah. And to have a shop. So everybody else I've interviewed apart from Rachel from the Rose Shed, everybody else who's a florist was a career changer. Whereas yeah. you and Rachel are the only two yes. who aren't, which is in a way you, you're you quite unusual, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that, I no, no, that lovely as, I take work. that as a real compliment. So. <laughs> Absolutely, because how old were you when you took on the shop? Um, right, so it was, it, was, it was nearly 13 years ago, so... I was 26. That's quite young, isn't it? Yeah, well, I felt young. It felt like, you know, I felt young. I felt inexperienced, like I didn't know what I was doing. But I had this mad sort of arrogant confidence about me that, uh, <laughs> that, that got me so far, <laughs> I think. And then, and then uh, maybe became a bit more of a hindrance, but um, yeah. It was, um, it, it, it was, it did feel risky, but I was, I was very sure that it was, we were presented with an opportunity to buy an existing flower shop, um, which, and it was very, it came out of the blue completely. I wouldn't have said we, I was ready for it, um, but it, you know, it came quite quickly and they needed a quick answer. So we were just, oh yeah, yes. So how did it start? Was it just you in the shop all the time or did you have help at the beginning? How did it? No, it was just me in the shop all the time at the beginning. Um, and that would have gone on for longer, except for I had a baby. So, okay. <laughs> in the first year, <laughs> which, um, so then I needed help, obviously. And, um, and that's really how I started to, how it started to grow, actually, when, when we first I was forced into getting help, which I, which was a great thing because you know, otherwise I may have just plodded on myself for too long. And knowing me, I probably would have got very frustrated and fed up with it. So, um, yes. So, but, what sort of services you offer? Was it just gift bouquets then, or were you do you doing weddings? What was it? I was doing weddings, and we actually we actually started with weddings that the previous florist had already booked in so we, we to some extent because it was an established flower shop already albeit not in our style um we hit the ground running um with that so we did just instantly have weddings and funerals and gift bouquets and everything so it was very much all your florist services straight away um and I think that's, I felt out of my depth quite often because I hadn't got, I still, I still don't really consider that I had a lot of experience under my belt when we started and I was young. And because I hadn't gone through the traditional floristry um, education and courses, you know, people would come in and people would want things ribbon edged and, and, you know, I was just like, I remember just being like, I don't know how to do this. I mean, this is awful, but I'm doing it and I don't know how to do it. So there was a, many, many years of just making things that, um, and I didn't understand why I was making them. I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, so it definitely was, a, there was a transition stage from, from being in the previous florist to having my own florist, but still feeling like well, I, I don't really understand why I'm, forcing these weird designs um, which aren't what I, what I really envisage this to be. So, that's so what was the trigger idea. for then creating the designs that you really were really really wanted to do? What happened? What? It was just a slow process. I don't think there was one like right I'm not doing this anymore I'm doing this now. It was just a slow process of 
I would have gone mad if I did, if I hadn't have been all that time, even when I was still doing these weird things, all that, I would have gone crazy if I hadn't also been expressing my sort of creative vision. So I was kind of doing a bit of everything all at once um, until gradually, thank goodness, people were started to recognize us for more our style than the than the other way and the more confident I became that people wanted that the more I felt able to say actually no to the other things so but that did take a while yeah, yeah. and it was the, when did Instagram come onto the scene for you was it before you sort of moved to your natural style or it was I think I was still I think it was it was a few years into the shop so I think I'd had um yeah, I think it was about three years in into having the shop so I had definitely started to move away from the more traditional um floristry and I think Instagram actually really helped because again it was about confidence and I think so much is it of it is about believing that you're you're allowed you're allowed to or you're I, I feel like maybe worthy to sounds a bit too dramatic but you, no no I you, totally understand you you can literally you can do what you want to do and put it out there and yeah some people might not like it but then but if it's a genuine expression there, there'll be people who who want that and who who take something from that so the more I got experience of that and was sort of convinced of it myself the more I felt able to do it so Instagram helped because I was putting it out there and I was getting this great feedback which I was like oh <laughs> I mean now we know that's made like an addictive <laughs> an addictive system but um, at first it was great <laughs> yeah but because before then you didn't have that ability of getting feedback about your work could you no. but unless you had somebody no. come into your shop and say oh I just yeah thank you so much for the wedding bouquet yeah. and, you know I, I guess yeah yeah no it, that was um no but even still because that did happen in the shop which is part of mm. one of the wonderful things about having a shop is the is the repeat customers and people coming in and talking to you about their experiences and their story and things like that but um with Instagram it was and it felt very exciting because it was you know worldwide yeah. it wasn't just my small corner of Sheffield it was yeah. you know it it was it was the whole wide world which felt absolutely liberating at the time amazing it's funny how I quickly think... we get used to things <laughs> oh my goodness but I think it's already important to look back and appreciate yeah. the time before that and you know yeah. what the difference these tools can make and yeah. I think what really makes you stand out is the incredible quality of your photographs Anna oh, thank you Rona thank you well yeah I've um for convenience sake um I've mastered the art of iPhone photography which I still kick myself about because it feels <laughs> like a total betrayal of my artistic training <laughs> but um yeah it's but it's wonderful to have something with you all the time that can just capture little moments or um that is easy and quick to use because we all move quite quickly these days so yeah but you've really you're really thoughtful about your backgrounds as well and the texture in your backgrounds and the colors of your background with the with the you think about your flowers that are in front and the candlelight and there's yeah. so much that goes into a photograph that you make it just sound so easy but I know Anna there's so much thought that goes into your photographs yes yeah, yeah. It, I mean it's a whole it is a whole image it's it's a it's a painting it's a you know what, what you have a frame and you're working within that frame and it's not just the flowers that you're photographing you're photographing everything there so how, and I have always been interested in the relationships between colours and light and different 
you know, different textures. And, and that is, I mean, that's photography, that's painting, that's flower arranging. And the fact that I never considered floristry or flower arranging an art, I hope, I hope that that's changed. I hope that people, I hope people at university now or at school, I hope it's seen as something different now. I'm sure it is. But, I'm sure I'm yeah. sure it is. I think the advent of the internet has, mm. as you say, you know, given people, especially with Instagram, the opportunity to see so many. I mean, florists are so lucky and that the the product they have is just so yeah. photogenic. Yes, it's an instant win, isn't it? <laughs> it's like <laughs> if you photograph it beautifully mm. though, and yeah, I really you're so I think you only shoot in natural light, don't you? Yeah. 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 yeah and I just love sometimes you'll use in your bouquets very unexpected color combinations and I'm like whoa that I really didn't expect to see that with that color but it just yeah. so worked how do you go about your selection of your materials for your bouquets I think I'm quite interested in the colors that I've I'm always I'm, I think maybe I'm just a, a total rebel so I'm always interested in the colours that shouldn't, or I'm told that don't go together. <laughs> like if someone says, oh no, you can't put those two get colours together. I'm instantly like, well, I'm going to put those two colours together and, <laughs> and let's see what happens. And I think a lot of it is, is about experimenting and, you know, but then you won't, I only put out the pictures that I like, don't I? So, you know, I don't always, two colors together and take a photo and go and think it works it's you know there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of um curation yeah yeah there is definitely um but you're an artist so you know you're not going to put out work you're not happy with I still feel I don't know I've uh, this is the, the word artist is still something that after years and years and years I, str I struggle with I, you studied I, I, art Anna I know I have to tell <laughs> I, I, it's one of my sort of daily mantras that I tell myself I am an artist <laughs> because somehow it just it's been knocked out of me I don't know I don't know why anyway we'll not go into that because that's maybe a, a minefield of um yeah a deeper thing well, I think the term <laughs> I think the term of floral artist is becoming more and more used and more mm. people are more familiar with it so um talking of, of artists and i'm going to lead on to somebody called constance fry who was a flower decorator she called herself and i noticed in your book that the first quote is from constance i can't even remember what that is <laughs> yeah well i don't worry i i will Which read out it? to you so she, you in the introduction it says, one arranges flowers as the spirit moves you to obey some inner prompting to put this colour with that, to have brilliance here, line there, a sense of opulence in this place of sparseness in that. To suit your surroundings, your mood, the weather, the occasion. In a word, to do as you please, just as, if you could, you might paint a picture. That's a wonderful quote, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing. It's I just amazing. had to read it then because it just oh, sums good. up. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad you did, because I mean that's it, isn't it? It's a, it's an artistic expression to to move as you to act as you feel moved and create as what you um, as an expression, like. And I think that is um, something we all need to make time for, um, because so much is work for other people or work for a project or work for a specification or and actually you can bring obviously you can bring your feeling into that and you can bring your artistic expression into working to someone else's um specification that's you know totally fine but actually sometimes to make just to make just for yourself um and not consider the end product at all and it'd be about the process I mean I have to tell myself this too because it is it's so important and that's a discipline to do that because that is the thing that you'll never have time for you'll never have time for the thing for yourself 
because it will always be about something else so it is well, you're just thinking about bringing in money for your business aren't yeah you? yeah or the next or content for instagram or <laughs> this or that you know it's and and it's like yeah it, it's something that i think is really really valuable to do yeah. so the all the designs in your book did you have complete control under what they were or did you have a brief from the publisher what how did it work complete control um which was wonderful really wonderful um which I'm so pleased about because I don't work that great uh, to um obviously with what weddings and things it's different but for the book for it to be a real creative exercise and for it to be something that I really poured myself into in that way I had to it had to be quite free and quite flowing and to move with the seasons and to go with what was available and and things like that so um it was it was very yeah it was very much sort of nature-led and um yeah not not really prescribed at all And who did you have in mind when you wrote the book? Who did you think would be your readers? I, it wasn't necessarily for florists or people who wanted to flower arrange. I think more just creative people who love nature. Uh, um, Maybe myself, uh, before I realised floristry was a job that you could do or was an art. Um, Yeah, I've not been asked that question before. That was nice. (laughs) (laughs) Something else I wanted to ask you about was your marketing campaign when your book came out. It was a 2019, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. So your marketing campaign, Anna, I have never seen anything so innovative. You sat in. Oh, my goodness. Where did all the ideas? So describe some of the things you did, because um, they were just so different to anything I'd ever seen any florist do. So we just took the book to, well, I just carried it around with me for over about (laughs) three months and just uh, filmed or took photos in just out and about in in nature and um, tried to find sort of corresponding pages that would fit in the surroundings of where we were, which was very much like the, what the book was about anyway. It was about create, you know, how the relationship between spaces and the flowers that you arrange and what's possible what what could be possible in different places and then so that was I mean that was definitely not my idea that was my husband's idea he was like you should do this and obviously he was you know it wasn't me taking all the photos either was it so no no. I mean after a little while it did get a little bit tedious (laughs) I need a photo here (laughs) yeah Oh no, what have we created? <laughs> but, An Instagram um, husband. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that was his idea, and that was. Um, uh, but yeah, I loved it. I did love it, and when we got into it as well, it was quite funny. The places that you could find. Um, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So let's talk and fast forward a few years to March 2020 and what was your reaction when Boris announced that everything had to close? Mm. Um, We we all were just a bit bewildered, weren't we? And scared, I think, because nobody knew how long it was going to be for or what it was going to look like. Um, and I, I, there were so many people doing, reacted in so many different ways, like florists or what well, businesses, but then florists as well. And some people just carried on, didn't they? And they created bouquets and delivered and thought outside the box and came up with inventive, um, like packs or, um, like DIY projects. And, and there was so much going on. And for me, I, I just... I just kind of closed down a little bit. I was a bit like, I can't, because I had the kids at home. Yeah, how many children have you got? I've got two boys. Um, 
and I was just like no I for me I just gotta stop um so we closed the shop and yeah just didn't do anything in terms of like any other side things any deliveries or any classes or you know we just we just stopped and I, I, I that was definitely the right choice for us um it obviously enabled well a few things it ena enabled me to be present then at home with the kids and I was uh, but one thing I did did have to be disciplined about was to continue to make and the making in that time was for me it felt sort of groundbreaking because it was I'd got used to um, being able to get the ingredients I wanted to get and having an idea and being able to just fulfill it and order it. And at that time, it, it, you know, I couldn't, the markets weren't open or people weren't delivering the locally grown flowers and my garden was not looking great. <laughs> so it is now though, <laughs> thanks to last year. But um, <laughs> um, so it became very, I was very limited. And I think creating it under that limitation um, was, was a really, really good thing for me. Cause I, 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 I looked harder um, and I used things that I not normally use. And yeah, it just, be it became, it became that pure, what I talk about and that I now have to create time and have the discipline for it became, that was the only thing there was so that all there was, was being curious and experimenting and looking outside the box and it just that felt that was great that was really wonderful so um yeah that was a good thing that came out of that time and also being able to then assess different areas of the business which we never ever would have we never would have stopped to do because everything is was, is just busy and one thing rolls into another and to another and next project and next wedding and next wedding and and as you know it just and it just keeps on going and um we never would have never would have taken a couple of months out to go right well what is it about this part of the business that's working and why are we still doing this and and that's invaluable too um without any but, distractions um, yeah, yeah. But I realise, you know, that it's quite a privileged position to be in, to be able to take the time. Well, I say privilege. Of, well, you know, like... I know exactly what, yeah. It it's, was. you know, we could do that, you know. There was... Um, that There was the space and there wasn't too much worry about other things. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, so and then... Did you, sorry. No, and then I was just going to say, and then the only the other thing, good thing that was that I just spent all the time, like also in the garden and gardening, yeah. and I am reaping the benefits of that now, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Are you using your flowers in your shop? I use them um, make more because because they're a bit limited in terms mm. of quantity. So I use them for weddings and um, in photo photo shoots and things but but yeah not um not certainly not enough for the day-to-day -day stocking of the shop so how many months were you closed did you open again when you were allowed to or yeah what in happened? June it was June and then we so we came back we decided rather than coming back full steam then to exactly how it was beforehand we'd we'd um go sat uh, Wednesday to Saturday so lose another day because we were only ever Tuesday to Saturday and mm -hmm. do sort of shorter opening hours and we've stuck with that now that like it's it's been it's been wonderful um I don't think we realized how the sh the shorter hours somehow haven't 
impacted the business so much. It just it's just busier in those hours, within those hours. So it feels very, I don't know, it feels very similar. Whereas we around that time, it feels like a whole new space has been opened up for other other things for you know admin or you know creative projects or other things and it doesn't feel quite as tied to the shop um yeah so what are your hours now so it's just wednesday to saturday 10 30 till 3 30 okay. and um in yeah it seems to be working really well Re really well which I'm it's like these um, businesses that go from four five days to four days lots of companies yes. especially american are yeah. trying that at the moment aren't they yeah and and it you know it just makes sense it just feels like with our lives and where what what i sort of preach about slowing down and and things like that it it does it feels right it feels like it's working Oh, so there have been, even though it was a horrendous time initially, there have been some positive changes due to the pandemic yeah. on your business. Definitely. Yeah, I definitely would say so. Um, and it's been more of a push in, in the way that I felt like I wanted it to go. But again, it's like how I talked earlier about working in the florist, which where I felt stifled and that sort of pushed me out to to move in the direction that felt more me or more you know more where I wanted to be and actually the pandemic to some extent has done that too you it's like it all kind of comes crashing down and feels awful but then from that place it's about sort of moving through and in a direction of something that feels better wow yeah. It's lovely your positive way of thinking. I try and think the same and that when something does hit rock bottom, you're just like, okay, how, why is this happening? And how can I look yeah. at the positive in yeah. this situation? Yeah, definitely. And it's just about watching it all, I think, watching your reactions to things, just being aware of, okay, well, I'm feeling this about this. And, and like you say, it's just questioning it. Well, well why? And normally somewhere along the line, if you can get there, you get to the answer. It's like, well, it's because I feel like, I don't know, I'm trapped in this thing. And it's like, okay, well, maybe the next step, albeit maybe just a small step is to move away from that and to something, explore a different way through. And then, um, yeah, I do. I do think it's not always easy in the moment, though, is it? No. <laughs> and, and also that uncertainty of is it going to work, and you yeah, know, what will people think? And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I think because of what we've gone through, people are some people are much more prepared to take a risk nowadays because yeah they've lost loved ones and you know we're yeah. only around I've gone all tingly running around for a little while really aren't we yeah absolutely yeah mm. I think um I think that the taking making the move and taking the risk is just yeah it's a scary scary thing but can have obviously can be a, an absolute life changer so so yeah. let's go back to the 26 year old Anna what, what would you have told yourself then do you think um I think just to slow down a little bit I think <laughs> yeah and to stop 26 year old Anna was quite fast and on one and a and a uh, maybe a bit of a people pleaser I think so always looking for the next um the next popular thing or the next you know fashion trend or something like that but I think just to slow down and listen a bit more would um would be good advice <laughs> so let's finish off with your three tips Anna please yes okay so I actually wrote these down which is Lots highly do. highly organized for me <laughs> um, normally I wing it without any notes whatsoever so the first one I have written is manifest which I would say is to um, only put out there what you want to be making and to talk about the work that you want to be doing. 
and also being specific in that not being afraid to I think we talked a little bit about it earlier not to be afraid that you are that you can do that that you are worthy of that work and that business and um and the specific spe it doesn't all have to be in public um you know it could just be in a journal or a notebook it's like right this is what I want to do and let your imagination go right oh I really want to create this thing where and you know and you can really go for it on that um and then maybe in public, you know, certainly putting out there on Instagram and social media, the work that you want to be creating and known for, or be your style. And um, yeah, I would say that was my first, my first That's tip. That's a brilliant one. I mean, yeah, did, mood boarding as well has become so yeah. popular, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think it is, um, but, the, but also having, and I, this is a bit more difficult, well, it is for me anyway, the belief. Yeah. So put, putting it out there and having the mood board or having the, this is what I want to do, but actually believing that that is a possibility and that is something that can come your way, I think is also really key to it. And the second one is play. And... Um, I think I think we've touched on all of these already, but um, no, it's good to repeat them. You mentioned yeah. play in your book as well, don't you? Yeah, curiosity, experimentation, not always making for a reason for content or for work, because um, I that that is because there's a there's a real it can be a conflict. I think there with when your creative practice is also your work, so you know the two don't always go hand in hand um art and making money necessarily <laughs> <laughs> so I would say having a discipline um of doing something that is just for you that is about the creative process and not just about the end product and whether that <clears throat> achieves what you um or someone else is is hoping for so that's the second tip. And the third one is rest. And um, I, would, I would wholly prescribe anyone um, to take full days off. And I know that sounds really simple, but I don't know, you know, do people take whole days off without even like checking their phone or social media or uh, emails? And, and I think sometimes people fool themselves, and I'm saying, I'm saying this from experience, um, into thinking that social media is a relaxing thing, which when your work life is all tangled up in, in one thing and it's, it's your passion and your passion, you're likely on social media to follow people who also have that passion. I think that even a simple thing of checking social media can trigger you into, into a spin. So taking full days off where you don't do any of that, which I still, um, I'll take days off and then I'll find myself on my phone. No, stop it. <laughs> I literally have to lock it up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, they're my three tips. Oh, so brilliant manifest brilliant. play and rest we should have done work rest and play shouldn't we we should work rest oh yeah like the mars bar <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, i'm sure we need look for yeah. <laughs> no i think yours is much more 2021 relevant manifest work and play definitely Thank you so much, Anna. Oh, it's been, you. I've had quite a few tingly moments during our conversation. Oh. And you can really, your Instagram really gives you a feel as to the sort of incredible artistry you have, but it's very different than hearing and seeing you speak. So it's just such an honor to finally meet you. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Rona. I, yeah, I, it's, it's been really lovely to talk it all through. And I think for me as well, because 
I, pro I actually, I process things by verbally talking about them and I don't often necessarily have the chance to, um, you know, ask, be asked those direct questions and it is quite, it helps me consolidate some of the things that I tell myself <laughs> as well. So it's really lovely. Oh, so where can people find you online, Anna? So uh, the website is uh, swallowsanddamsons.com and we're um, on Instagram, Swallows and Damsons, and we are Facebook as well, which is, I think it was swallowsanddamsons.com for some reason. It was an early, <laughs> uninformed choice. Um, and um, yeah, that's us online, just the three, those three places. And your book's available from all good books. Yeah. Yeah, from yeah, from everywhere, independent and bigger ones too. Great. Well, hopefully our floral paths will cross in real life in the in the future. Yeah. We've got relatives in Sheffield, so I need Have to you? make sure. Oh, well, yeah. No excuse, then. My brother in law is <laughs> in Sheffield. Oh, so wow. I, yeah. Yeah. So yes. uh, I've got next time we ever get up to see him, I will make sure that I give you a call definitely definitely and i'd love to see your shop after seeing yeah. so many photos of it <laughs> yeah you'll have to come and have a look yeah i'd love to thank you so much thank you thank you very much take care yes you too so I hope you enjoyed my interview with Anna. It was such a pleasure spending time with her and unearthing some of the um, challenges that we as creatives have in the big C word confidence and belief and uh, the conversation made me want to go and create another mood board and uh, manifestation um, is one of the words that just keeps on coming up at the moment. So I hope the interview has inspired you to take action and in particular maybe the three tips which Anna gave. And um, don't forget to check out her on Instagram and her website. And if you'd like some beautiful inspiration, check out her book as well. It'd be lovely if you'd like to subscribe, like, comment, share, and I'll see you again next Tuesday.